MSC Cruise Cast is a Triple T production. Now, the Taste Try Travel Team of Beth and Chris. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the MSC Cruise Cast. I am Beth, and you are Chris. And we are the Taste Try Travel Team. That's right. Bringing you over on YouTube if you're listening to this on your yep. on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. <laughs> Bringing you another uh, little bit of a controversial subject today. Look out! Watch out! We're going to get we some strongly worded letters. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> um, this. So we're just going to jump right really? in You're today. You're not going to say oh, anything wait a about second. I know. this I, right here? I put my little, I don't know if you can see it. I have a little medallion necklace on and Chris wanted to matchy match with me. So I put my Jonathan <laughs> Livingston Seagull. Oh, who knows who that is? If you if you know who Jonathan Livingston Seagull is, put it in the comments and and good for you for knowing that. If you don't look it up, it's very, very cool and interesting. Anyway. Today's coffee comes to us from... <laughs> I didn't know that was a segment. I don't know. Of our, of our podcast, but Beth likes to do that every once in a while. Today's coffee... Is, is it like a... It's uh, Amazon generic, and I think the further we get from Christmas, the less quality our coffee becomes. <laughs> We have leftover, <laughs> leftovers of, that we need to use. All of our family that. gives us lots so, of coffee. So um, anyway, but it's still very good. All right, Mrs. Controversial Subject Picker, what did you pick mm. for today? We're going to talk about um, shore excursions, pier runners, being left at a port if you're too late coming back. Exactly, because that's, that's a, a lot. That's a lot to go over. But well, it is. Just because the there's so many variables there in is. that subject yeah. is to, but we'll get into that. So yeah. so we kind of want to. We're just gonna. Um, it was just a couple weeks ago in the news. The Norwegian Dawn left um, eight passengers in Africa, um, and once all this information was shared online, there is people for both sides, right? Kind of saying which side is right. So we're gonna kind of go through that. Um, we sometimes book shore excursions through the cruise line. A lot of times we don't. So after kind of going through the story, we're going to kind of tell you like our criteria when we're deciding what we want to do. And then we have kind of two fun stories about times that we went off on our own and why we felt comfortable doing that. And I have a third. Oh, you do? Story. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll see what we can get to. Oh, we're going to get to the story. <laughs> so... um we we'll just kind of go through the, the highlights of this. So on March 20th, the Norwegian Dawn left Cape Town, Africa for a 21 day voyage up the African coast and it was going to end in Barcelona. So um, everyone had been on board about a week. So it was March 27th when they stopped at, I don't think I'm pronouncing this right, Say Tome. Probably really wrong. Um, it was an island off of that's, Nigeria. I think that's that's <laughs> Mel Torme's <laughs> sister, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. I don't I'm not pronouncing Say it right. Torme. Say out. I don't know because they have like accent little things on there. So anyway, so they were in this island off of Nigeria, and eight passengers from the Norwegian Dawn booked a private tour of the island. It didn't get back on time. So it, 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 I couldn't find exactly how light, late they got back, but they were more than an hour past the time that the ship was supposed to leave. So um, they had tried multiple tries to get to contact the ship. So they had called NCL's um, um, emergency number. And um, for some reason, the only way to get hold of the ship that way was through email which just seems like is a is a funny option. Um, the port authorities tried to get a hold of the ship. So subject the line. <laughs> exactly. Don't leave without us exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Exactly. Um, 
so the passengers did try to contact the ship, um, but after they were more than an hour late, the uh, NCL made the call that they were not going to wait for them. Uh, the passports of these guests were returned to the port authorities, which I'm going to come back to that little sentence because I have a hard time. I don't understand that sentence. But anyway, um, the ship left. Mm-hmm. The ship left. So they were very late coming back. Um, Short story of the rest of it, it took them 48 hours of traveling through seven countries and spending over $7,500 for these eight people to reboard the ship like two stops later. Yeah, I That's heard that crazy. they went to the next stop and the ship was unable to Due to safety stop. reasons, the, the so, tide was too low, so they couldn't get into that port. Yeah. So they had to go to the next, next one, one. Yeah. The next port to meet the ship. So. so from the passenger's point of view, they feel that the ship should have stayed longer. Um, one of the quotes, there is a couple... Um, That was from South Carolina. That was part of this group of eight. And one of their quotes, you know, to the media is they really forgot, talking about NCL, that they are people working in the hospitality industry and that the safety and well-being of their customers should be the first priority and that should be placed first. It was a basic duty of care that they had forgot about. That sounds like lawyer speak, but I kind of agree a little bit with that, that that's that's. I don't know if I agree with that. And I think we're going to be... We're going to be a little... We're going to be a little different opposite ends of this. Very much so. Well, I don't know if the ship needs to wait forever. Right. Um, And I don't know while they're on the trip back, the the communication that was going on between them and the ship probably was non-existent. Right. So the ship's having a hard time um knowing where they What's are on, right anything like that um but that really does have to be number one in the ship's um priority list is the safety of the passengers now i'm going to say this with an asterisk also because mm-hmm. the ship's captain i think kind of I think I don't know the captain. Right. But I think that he probably thinks like airline pilots where airline pilots, they are entrusted with the lives of the people on board. And they take that very seriously. Very seriously. Their decisions affect everything Mm -hmm. about the safety. And I think 99.9% of pilots out there that is their number one rule when they are making any decision they make. Pilots and captains, yeah. So I think that probably ship captains are the same. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, okay. And that they think along the same lines yeah. as well, I have 6,000 souls on board. Right. And I need to make sure that every single one of them is safe. Correct. So, I have a feeling that it was a very hard decision for the captain. At least I hope it was. Mm-hmm. I hope so. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm assuming it is, too. Yeah. <laughs> that for him to decide to leave them in a foreign part of the world, in a place that doesn't speak their language. I mean, he may not know that, but, right. you know. He's probably assuming that most guests on there are English speakers. Right. Um, so he's got to assume that the, he's leaving people there. He doesn't know how their money situation, their health situation, if mm-hmm. they have medicine that they need. So that's got to be a hard decision for it him. It does. But ultimately, he has to decide that. I mean, at some point, he has to make that call. He does have to make the call at some point. I mean, I understand. You can't. Like, you can't destroy the rest of the crews because people have made bad decisions. Right. And they didn't know they were making a bad decision. Correct. Or else they most likely would not have made that decision. Exactly. (laughs) They didn't know they were going to make this. So it's a mistake. So there's got to be a little bit of grace there from the cruise company. Right. You know, it has to be a little bit because they made a mistake. 
It's not like they purposely did that. Right. Yeah. So I understand. And I'm a little sympathetic to them saying that needs to be their number one priority. And I I kind of agree with that. But like you said, at some point, the captain's got to go. I can't wait any longer. Yeah. Or we're going to miss our next port. Yeah. And I have 5,000. I don't know how many she said, but right. if they, you know, if, let's say it holds 6,000. I have 5,992 passengers. <laughs> yeah. That I also need to make sure that they're getting the vacation that they paid for. Right. So he's incurring expenses. And anyway, I'm going on, yeah. but I kind of understand that that. That needs to be a big priority for cruise lines is their safety, especially when they're in a foreign country like that. Right. It's not like it's the Bahamas, Nassau, which is just Correct. Miami East. Correct. So, Well, that's kind of like my point of view is, goodness, if we were traveling in Africa, somewhere where we were not familiar with, where we did not speak the language, um, I don't know if I would be booking shore excursions on my own with an outside vendor. Now, some of the, uh, uh, so everything's going on social media right now is talking about some kind of conspiracy where the cruise lines want you to book with them because they get a kickback from that. And because that this group did not book with the ship, they kind of got like dissed by the by the captain because it wasn't our shore excursion. We don't need to worry about you. And I have a feeling that that may not necessarily be true because I don't, I don't think the I'm captain go necessarily ahead and say that's cares not about that. True. <laughs> NCL does want you to book with them. They make every cruise line does. But yeah, 160 people they're making, or I mean, eight eight people they're making another 150 bucks. Yeah, so that's probably not a big decision. No, I, I'm no, probably not factoring. I don't in, think that is at all. Like they're not they're not making a big deal over 150 but bucks. But two hundred thousand uh, dollars that that's a different story. So let's go back to this little bit of a line that is in pretty much every story that I read about this. Hi, Kitty. Um. They're pa- no, I can't talk to you right now. <laughs> gotta go bye bye. He's got to put his two cents in on this subject. Their passports so were returned to port authorities. Now, why weren't the passports with themselves when they were in a foreign country? I would bring my passport with me. Number one, how did the cruise line not know that they didn't have their passports? At what point did they feel like they had to? open their room and open their safe to try to look for the passports. And then how do they get their passports? I'm very confused about that whole process. Yeah. Why do, why did they not have their passports? I don't understand why they didn't have their passports. I mean, I understand that in some ports in like the Caribbean, I don't take my passport. You just just take your ID and your cruise card Yeah, and, and a credit card. Anywhere in Europe, even in Europe, we bring our passports with us. Right. But if I'm, not in NASA. It's it. <laughs> Our um, passports don't come with us uh, for that. Right. But, but anywhere else, I'm taking my passport. Absolutely. Especially in a smaller area absolutely. in Africa. I am taking knowing, my passport. Knowing that I'm taking a, cru- a, a, a shore excursion, not with the cruise line. Now, the, the plus for booking with the cruise line is that they will guarantee you get back to the ship. I mean, if the ship has to leave without you, they will fly you. They'll take They will do everything they can to get back. you. So that, that's your guarantee when you book outside of the cruise, let's say with Viator. I know sometimes they're a big one in Europe and stuff. Um, they don't, not all, not all sh- tour companies guarantee you get back to the ship and then the ship won't wait for you obviously if it's an outside company so um knowing that they're i don't know i think that they should have maybe been a little bit more prepared now a little bit more um with this is only this couple from south carolina had their visa credit card with them um and and so a lot of times some places and those smaller countries won't take U.S. dollars and they won't take American Express or Discover or I mean, Visa is pretty much the like were you, you going to say have. Diners Club? No, because. I was not going to say Diners Club. <laughs> <laughs> um, a Visa card is pretty much what you have um, that anybody will take. 
so um, they spent a lot of money multiple days trying to get everybody back. Now, NCL does not take responsibility for them missing it. They said they were very well aware of the time uh, and granted something obviously must have happened that made them get back late. So they did know the time. Um, but they did reimburse all, um, mm-hmm. this this couple that $7,500 that they spent, which I think is correct for them to do. You do, um, huh? I, I think so. Hmm. Because I have, I have sympathy for them saying yep. that NCL needs to make the decision based on their safety. And I don't know. I wasn't in that. I wasn't on the bridge at the time they made that decision. So yeah. I don't know what decisions they were contemplating. Right. But I think that's very nice of NCL it to do that. Would, and I'm even on their side. Yeah. Because they did miss the boat. They did. So... Technically, NCL did not have to do anything. Um, But I think in this day of social media and everyone sharing this and every news outlet doing it, I think it's kind of like a PR thing that NCL reimbursed that. I think that's what they had to do to keep. Yeah, that. uh, I mean, how awful would NCL look if they these people did all this and then they didn't? You know what I mean? So I don't I think NCL kind of had to. Don't you think? There probably was a lot of pressure. <laughs> a lot of pressure. And I'm sure the, they would have got such backlash. If they yeah, the upper echelons of NCL went. You know, it's just it's in the end. It's eight thousand dollars. It's eight thousand dollars. <laughs> just go ahead and give it to them. <laughs> um, yeah. So I just think that, in in kind of going in, like if we were in this situation. I mean, we have booked, we've done a lot of things, not with the cruise line. And we'll tell you an example of that. But um, gosh, I would have my passport. I would have my, and we travel with a visa card knowing that that's what they take. I would have that. I would have all the emergency numbers. Like I would be like prepared. And it just seems like some of these passengers were not. (laughs) Well, I'm going to give you, this is my story that you, okay. I'm going to give you an example of okay. why this hammered home to me of making smarter decisions mm-hmm. when we're going away from a cruise line mm-hmm. hmm. um, on our own. And that was on our honeymoon. Yes. We honeymooned. Gosh, how long ago was that? That was 20, <laughs> 24, almost 25 Almost years. 25 years ago, yeah. It's like a few This months. November, we're celebrating our 25th anniversary. Yes. November. October, September. What the hell? September. <laughs> um, we honeymooned in Fiji mm-hmm. and we were staying at this beautiful resort. Mm-hmm. Um, and they told us there's a uh, sandbar about mm, half a mile out into the ocean. <laughs> I wasn't sure what story you were going to bring up. Now I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah. There's a sandbar about halfway out in the ocean or halfway, (laughs) (laughs) halfway out the like the little bay area. Well, I mean, it was it was about half a mile. It was a good ways out there. Yeah. So we went out there because you could walk and swim. Didn't they tell us not to, though? I don't know. I don't remember them telling us not to. Okay. I don't remember that. Maybe I maybe I didn't hear that part. I'm like, sandbar, I'll go to it. Sure. Yeah. Because that's pretty much what I do when I hear there's a sandbar out there. Anyway, um, so you could walk and maybe it got deep enough a little bit to swim, but it's mostly just walking out there. You just walked all the way out and then it rose up another probably three feet once you got to the sandbar. So it was mm-hmm. basically like maybe knee to to waist deep out there on the sandbar. Right. And we are having an awesome mm-hmm. time out there. I mean, it was so much fun to be out that far away from the shore and, you know, be able to stand up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They had a, uh, like a pier that went out a little bit and there was a restaurant mm-hmm. that was way far away. That was probably another half a mile on the, yeah. to, you know, the side of us. So, but it was neat to see that. It was just neat to see like the, the island from that perspective. Right. And we were having a good time out there, just relaxing and having a great time on our honeymoon. And it got later in the day. Mm-hmm. We were out there for a few hours. Mm-hmm. 
It got later in the day. And we didn't think about high tide. Mm -hmm. And we didn't think about it while we were out there. But, you know, looking back at it now, the water kept going up and up and Uh up and 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 up. And it got to the point where we were basically like with our heads above the water on the sandbar. So that meant that going back to the hotel, we were going to have to swim the entire way. Right. And that was frightening because, for one, it was dusk by that time. We did not make good choices. We made terrible choices. <laughs> that was the beginning of our poor choices. <laughs> um, so it was dusk. That was frightening. The water was a little bit more, had a little bit more current to it. Yep. Because the it was high tide, high, yeah. the waves were higher. So we were basically stuck on the sandbar a half a mile from shore. Nobody knows we're there. Mm-mm. It's going to be night pretty soon. And I'm thinking in my head, oh my gosh, we're going to be headlined somewhere. There's going to be a couple <laughs> disappears on their, <laughs> right. On their honeymoon, and they're found, you know, washed up on the shore, drowned. And the people are going to be like, what happened? <laughs> that seriously was like running was through my scary. brain. Yeah, it, was it was scary. frightening. Mm-hmm. And we had to, like, find our... We found just little spots that would come up. And mm-hmm. we'd kind of go to the edge of that and then try to find another spot. As the waves were It would come up just us. enough yeah. for us to, like... Stand on it a little bit. Mm-hmm. And it took us probably, what, like two hours to get back to the shore. Because there was reef in between. Yeah. We had to be really careful because there were like razor, razor sharp, sharp reefs, reefs right in there. So it was, yeah. So anyway, that made me, I thought we were pretty smart before that. <laughs> Evidently we weren't. <laughs> We've learned a little bit in, over the years. <laughs> but that really made me realize that when you're doing things on your own. In somewhere you're not familiar with. You need to make smart decisions for yourself and not rely on someone else yep. to protect you. Yep. Or, I agree, yeah. 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 So that just kind of... Um, made me realize that when we're making those decisions as to whether we book we with at the, the whole. cruise yep. line or book on our own yep. or just do something on our own, we need to really look at it in a in a circumspect way. Very much so. And not just take into account price or not just take into account Correct. availability. Yep. Or there's other people going on it too, so I'm safe. Right. Absolutely. There's a whole lot of things you need to take into account where you're at, where you're at. And and I'm the money person between us. So I'm like, oh, my goodness, this is really expensive. And so I, I have to be careful not to just look at that because um, try to go cheaper is not always the best way to go. Nope. <laughs> um, and I'm not saying that's what they did in in, um, in in this story, but we've learned that as well. Um so that's pretty much some of the parameters that we look at. We have cruised um, in Europe, uh, Alaska, Canada now, Caribbean, Mexico, Mexico, both sides. So, so we've had a good amount of cruising, um, and we're very like um, aware if we're going to do something off the ship. If there's English speaking. We can communicate with the people. We can do. Um, I feel more comfortable doing that if we can get back to the ship on our own. Um, always carry our passports and our visas with us when we're not in the Caribbean. Always plan to be back several hours, and I kind of freak out about this. Like we need to be back in plenty of time <laughs> because it allows room for um, allows time for something to go wrong, right? So don't just push it to the very end. Um, and on my notes, I just have like mostly I have to be like super comfortable decision. We have to like agree that we're okay doing this on our own. Um, we're gonna share like two stories where we kind of did some things on our own and where we took into account all of those things. Um, 
But I'll tell you, recently when we were on Princess, the Emerald Princess, we just did that a couple months ago, and we did the, we really wanted to see the Hopewell Rocks, so that's where it was the biggest title change in the world. We wanted to see that for a long time. Um, there were ways to do it on our own, and because it was like a two and a half hour drive. So I say, when you go, to, you you dock in St. John's, which yep. is on the other, other side, side. Yep. of the peninsula that separates Separates the Bay of Fundy from the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, it's a good way. So away. it's a ways in there. So yep. that was had to be. That's exactly what we're talking about. We take into account. That's a. It's way cheaper, and you can do things. You can out do there on- that are fun, a lot more fun than just going and looking at yeah. it if you book it on your own. It yeah. was like you can get out on a raft and the tidal bore yep. and yep. and surf the little. If you weren't by the restraints of how. Yeah. Yeah. So. And we looked at a lot of things. We did because I really wanted to <laughs> yeah. get out there and, and do the rapids that. That are, happened that, when the yeah. with the, when the two waters meet. Um, but it was like two and a half hours. Um, and we ended up booking with the cruise line on this uh, because we had um, Chris's mom with us. So we didn't want to do something on our own and then, you know, have to figure out how to get back. Um, It was expensive. It was $160 per person to do this shore excursion. And I don't ever usually spend that much money. So the three of us, it was a good amount of money. And at the end of the day, um, I would say we weren't disappointed in the Hopewell Rocks, but we were overall disappointed in the in the excursion itself, at least I was, because you're just two and a half hours on this bus with this um, tour operator that wasn't really fun or funny to listen to. Uh, So we won't really go into too much of that, but- um, You got a turkey sandwich. Got a dry turkey sandwich and a little like, so there was like a little sack lunch that, you know, we got the last of and we got a bottle of water. And um, so overall it was like a really expensive thing to do, but, I'm happy we did it. I'm happy we got that experience and we got to spend that time there. So that some of the, um, I lost the word. It's some of the things you have to sacrifice in order to sometimes get somewhere you want to that's pretty far away. Now, um, if you watch our channel at all, you know that we're not huge fans of NASA because just because we've been there like 30 times. <laughs> um, so when we were on the uh, Carnival Sunshine, was that right? Yes. This would have been about a year and a half ago. We were looking for something different to do in NASA. And we came across um, Clifton Heritage National Park, which had the Ocean Atlas Underwater Sculpture Garden. Um, And it was on the other side of the island from where the ship docked. So it was about like a 45, 50 minute cab ride Mm -hmm. um, up to this place. Um, So we did this completely on our own, knowing we could get back easy enough, right? So we had the whole day in NASA. um, So we took this, what ended up probably being about an hour cab ride up. That was a whole deal in itself with this guy like i don't know was he high i don't that cab (laughs) ride was a little rough (laughs) well that was when we first about halfway up there we were wondering did we make a big mistake well because we originally we booked it with the return right Right. so he was going to drop us off He was going to leave us there for two hours and then he was going to bring us back and so he knew that we knew that going in that so we didn't just like take a random hour cab ride and then hope we could get back like we we planned it enough so he was going to come back and yeah that on the ride up we're like oh i don't know like we paid for the (laughs) ride up and we were going to pay for the ride back when he took us back we didn't pay them for the ride back beforehand we're not yeah. quite that dumb yeah um so there was an incentive for him to come pick us up but he was acting once we got in the cab he was acting bizarre so we were like oh my goodness like yell talking to people outside the cab I, he was just driving yelling it was crazy he was crazy couldn't understand some of the stuff he was saying yeah and, so anyway we're like halfway like beyond the point of take us back and yeah we're like golly 
is this the time that we become the people that are left behind because we couldn't get back from we didn't know because we, we hadn't didn't know. Been, we hadn't done right. that yeah we hadn't been up there so um but it turned it he, he dropped us off we ended up spending a wonderful two hours um i think chris will link this video um it was a great day um instead of spending it on the ship like we normally would do where we got to snorkel out and um dive down and see these underwater sculptures so yeah i just wanted to say real quick that that is an example of something that the cruise ship is not going to offer that it didn't offer no. so there are i would say better experiences out there mm -hmm. than the cruise ship offers so that's yeah. why it might be something that tempts you yeah and it we, does me always because oh, I like exactly. doing stuff that is a little off the beaten path. So. That's the way we are built. We're built to enjoy the kind of the quirky off the path, off the beaten path stuff. Um, this park had so much to offer because it was like a heritage park for the Bahamian Islands. Um, it was kind of an eco park, too. So it had all the different, um, you know, dunes and beaches and uh, all this. So it was a really cool place. So I wish we would have stayed. We probably could have stayed an extra two was, hours there. It was where it was Jaws Jaws 3, three the, and also the, um, the James revenge. Bond. Yeah, and or something like that. one of the James Bond plane crashes was filmed there. So yeah. they had like that's how beautiful it is. Um, and it's really cool. And I'm on a lot of forums too. And a lot of times people are asking, what can we do in NASA? And I like to share this because it's now that we've done it, I feel comfortable saying because the people up there were wonderful. They were like, listen, if he doesn't come back for any reason, we'll get you a cab. We'll make sure you get to your your um your ship. They were absolutely wonderful. Um yeah, let's I want to stress that even more. OK, <laughs> because on the ride up there, we were like we had concerns. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. What have we got ourselves into? Right. Are we going to be able to get back once we got there immediately? They immediately put our. Yeah, he was rest. like, don't worry about it. Well, don't worry about it. Because we, we did. We, we said, will. we're not sure if he's going to show up. Yeah. I mean, we immediately yeah, yeah voiced our concerns to the guy that was at the yeah. at Clifton. Yeah. Um, and he said, don't worry about it. We'll get you a cab. You don't have to worry at all. Yeah. If he doesn't show back up, we will get you one. No problem. Exactly. And so we kind of. Everybody there was that way, too. Exactly. So. Yeah. And there were there were it wasn't crowded, but there was a, there was some more, more people there. And mm -hmm. um. And we ended up, we just had to pay for admission and we got down there to the area where you um, kind of snorkel out and they had some locals there that were kind of like guides and we didn't have to pay for them or anything. They just kind of helped. There was another couple with us. We were able to swim out and um, they uh, helped us like dive down and they took our camera down since I couldn't dive as deep as they could, but they were wonderful. We ended up just tipping them, you know, after they were done, but that was a wonderful day that we had um we did only spend a couple hours there because i was very anxious to make sure we got back in time um but our cab driver did show up we're pretty sure he went back to his house during that two hours and smoked some more weed because he was even worse on the ride home <laughs> he was like a little i mean we didn't feel unsafe driving with him but he was just like I felt a little unsafe weird. driving with him. It was weird. <laughs> a little unsafe. But he got us back on time, so it was all good. The same price we originally um, kind of went back and forth with. So we had a wonderful time. And so we like to share that story because in some of these places that you will always go, you're always going to end up going to NASA and all of your uh, Caribbean cruises. There's some really cool things to do outside. Um, we had our passports with us and we had plenty of money with us because we had a, um, we had like a waterproof bag and we brought that, you know, like a swim bag. And almost. we were in port from like 7 a.m. to like four or five we I were think. back like four hours before we needed to That's right kind of, but i was I'm just worried. saying we <laughs> it was a long, that was a long there was a long day there mm -hmm. so we knew we had nine ten hours yep, and we knew it. that we had we had we both were comfortable with that choice right so. we knew it was an hour right up there hour right back you spend an hour or two there that yep. gives us three yeah. hours on either side yeah so, yeah so hopefully that's, and that's something that we considered when we were deciding this, exactly so. um so that was a that was a 
it turned out good. No problems. Yep. Now, the last story I wanted to share was another time when we chose to go out on our own. This was when we were on our 20th anniversary. Uh, oh, don't show that yet. Okay. Oh, it was big. It was our 20th anniversary, but it's also a big family reunion. And we did the NCL getaway. It was a 21 day cruise and it went kind of it went out of Copenhagen. Right. Yep. And it kind of bounced back in kind of, you know, a lot of the ports there. And then it went um, across the Atlantic and then did a, a Bermuda and a couple ports and ended in New Orleans. And we were able to do it with our whole family. So uh, that was it was a. It was a good trip. We, uh, one of the stops was the stop for Paris, which is La Havre. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. La Havre. La Havre. But which it's, means the Harvey. <laughs> it does not. In English. <laughs> um, it's the normal stop where cruises will stop for Paris. So um, and the rest of our family chose to do a short excursion in with the cruise line into Paris, which very smart choice because that's like a four hour bus ride. Wasn't it like crazy like it's that? It's long. Three or four. It was like crazy long. And then they spent like a couple hours in Paris and came back. Um, but I want to do something else, which um, about 60 miles away, um, it's this uh, town in Normandy, which Normandy covers the whole like north side of France, and it was a kind of a smaller city named R O U E N Rune. We don't have a French accent, so I don't really know how to pronounce it. Whenever they would say it, it was like yeah. they started and then they never Just finished. Never it. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> But in this instance, we like I I really wanted to go to this place kind of for two reasons, because um, I've always been a fan of Julia Child. And growing up, we watched, you know, my mom did, too. Like we watched all of her stuff. And um, there is a restaurant there in Rune, um, which is called the again, not with my French, La Corion, which basically is the crown. And this restaurant um, started out as an inn serving food back in 1345. Um, and it is the oldest restaurant in France and one of the very one of the very oldest in all of Europe. And um, this is the restaurant where when Julia Child um he's going to have some footage of the movie Julie and Julie you don't have any it was half the screen for some reason so I'm not going to put that up well in Julia and Julia um, the movie um, with Amy Adams you can see like the very beginning of the movie Um, you can see the like the footage of her like obviously the movie part of her going to this restaurant Um, but it's the very first restaurant that Julia Child ate at when she visited France and it's where she had her first like truly French meal and fell in love with the cuisine and then decided to dedicate her life to bringing that making it more accessible for everybody in America so I really wanted to see this restaurant now we we were going back and forth that we were going to eat there and it was crazy expensive it was crazy expensive and by the we time thought, our train well, got we'll, there we'll, we'll do it we'll see when we it's get gonna there it's going to be a special yeah um, but Maybe by, we'll share a meal. <laughs> but by the time we got there, um, it was almost they were they were fully booked and it was almost closed because they closed between lunch and dinner. So um, but they did let us actually walk in. Um, and there's a ton of famous people that have eaten there. Um, everybody. Everybody. Everybody's famous has eaten. At everybody has La eaten Caroon. there. Even. Uh, yeah. So um, we got to at least walk in and everything. But that restaurant sits on the square on this like like medieval square almost it's not medieval anymore but you can still see some of the the walls and the ruins of in there and it's actually where Joan of Arc um was burned at the stake in 1431 so it has yeah. a lot of history yeah as I say they have the still actual, parts of the square yeah, where it happened that they have like preserved right they, um, they excavated it yeah I don't know when I don't last. know either you know 20 years or something and so that's like a little preserved area that you can walk around in yeah it's kind of weird yeah you'll be walking around (laughs) like you can sit on the wall that somebody sat on been there since the like the 1300s and watch joan of art 
burned to death. You yeah. can sit on that wall if you want. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's got a little, it's it kind of cool to see like all the, that stuff. It's like so. remnants of like a church yeah. and the actual, like the actual like spot, obviously like not the pole or anything, but like the actual spot. And um, it was just incredible, incredible history in this little place. And so it was an hour train ride and they have, if you know, traveling in Europe, they have so many trains. So um, we felt really comfortable with you know if we missed a train we would still have time because the ship was in port a really long time if you can imagine people going to paris were on the bus for like seven to eight hours and then they had also time to spend in uh, paris so um it was a really long port of call um of course we brought passports we brought um, um, I even brought information for a car rental if I needed to, for something to happen with the train, we could rent a car and, and drive it there. So I had lots of contingency plans on that, but we didn't spend, we only spent what, like two hours, maybe there, three hours since we didn't end up eating at the restaurant. Um, we ended up like at just kind of walking around the cafe. town. Yeah. yeah. We saw the clock. It's Oh, do you, do you have that? It's like a yeah. mathematical clock or yeah. something that has been there for, I don't even know how long, but it's one of those things. This is a, such an old town and it's one of the ones that didn't get um, destroyed during World War. Part of it did, but Part of, but not but this like central The majority area. of yeah. it, yeah, this was, yeah. So it was such a cool little town and we want to go back and uh, explore more of that. I was going to say, we... This is how we are now. Yeah. We were so mindful mm -hmm. while we were walking around that town yep. that we need to get back. Yes. We need to make sure we make it to that train. Yep. That we went to this little square yep. that was like right, right next, right to, the next to the train station. Literally like across the street from the train station. Yeah. Like an hour before the train yeah. was due in and we just sat and had some coffee like i think that, yeah. we <laughs> maybe ordered something too bread bread Remember was we at it. like bread yeah <gasps> so we just sat there and kind of people watched in the middle of this old medieval town yeah. people walking around it was beautiful but that's what we did to make sure that we hit Made that it. train yep when it was there and were able to get back in time so yeah. so um Yeah, I'm trying to remember if we really did much else. I think we just kind of walked around and and then just kind of waited for the train because <laughs> you're we just like kind of pretty the train. much what we did. I mean, we kind of um, walked around everything. If, we, if I remember right, like you just walked and like you turned a corner, and you're like, oh my goodness, there's a giant beautiful church everywhere. That we were like anywhere oh. else would be the main star of yeah. of the town, but the but in ruin, there's like five of them and they're just it's kind of amazing. randomly placed yeah i think that we like heard singing you remember that we were like heard singing and we were like trying to find it we turned the corner and it was it's like this coming from a church and couldn't get in the church because something was going on yeah but, yeah um but it's a good example of like especially in europe especially in europe not far off of your port there is amazing stuff and there were no shore excursions with any company that went to this town. Yep. Um, so that's why we made the choice to kind of do it on our own. I will tell you, um, the scariest train ride I have ever been on was from Rune to La Havre. So going back. Chris remembers this situation completely different. Do I have time to tell this? Yeah, we're okay. 43 minutes. So okay. You can do it pretty quick. So we... Um, got on the train and we were sitting um, with our backs to the, like the luggage storage, which is usually in the back of the car. So like a couple of little racks where people put their kind of can put their luggage. Yeah. So we we're had so we were kind of towards the back of the car of the train car, and we were sitting there and we had picked up pastries. We didn't we had had lunch, but we hadn't had anything sweet. And we there was like this little like sidewalk cafe that had these like french pastries and we each got something and our bag weighed like four pounds and we just knew it was like delicious we were so looking forward to sitting on the train driving back and eating these pastries right we were sitting there the train was about to get ready to take off and there was this mother and this two cheese two like seven eight year olds you know somewhere in there and she was dragging this massive purple uh luggage 
piece of luggage behind her. And I happened to just notice because this is like a, one of those big old luggage. And she walked by because I was sitting where I could see her easy. So she walked by with the two kids. They got on to, and I just didn't think anything else of it. And then put their luggage. Well, I assumed. But as we were as the train was now starting to pull out, I look through the window and I see this mother and her two children now standing on the sidewalk. So they are not on the train and they no longer have their piece of luggage with her, with them. So the luggage is clearly on the train, clearly right behind us because it's all happened very quickly. And she's on her phone, on her cell phone, watching as the train departs. And, you know, like the only thing going on in my head is like, there is an explosive device right behind us. <laughs> and why is she not also traveling with her luggage? She clearly got on and then left her luggage and got off and is now calling someone and watching as the train pulls away. And the only thing going through my mind is I'm now going to die. Like we are going to die. I don't know when this thing will go off, but it's we're going to die. And so like the bite of pastry I had like sunk in my stomach and I couldn't even eat any more of it and I couldn't taste it. I was like so much fear. And here's Chris and next like mm, I just like eating his That was a delicious <laughs> pastry. Let me tell you, there was a pound and a half of pastry cream inside that he's like and that well, was delicious. If we're gonna die, I'm gonna enjoy this. And I I can't. <laughs> That's like the difference between it. I could not. And I just remember like probably half an hour into the trip, I was still so I had so much fear that we were just going to die. I couldn't even move. But finally, I got up and the luggage was not behind us. So I don't know what she did with it or what happened with it. But that was like the worst train ride. And I did not get to enjoy my French pastry. Obviously, nothing happened with the train. But um, I was darn. I, I could have had a different story. But um, yeah, I was hoping for a really exciting ending on that story. Like the exciting ending is we made it back to the ship. And we made it like knocked <laughs> no. us out like indiana jones style in a refrigerator no nope. we were we were strapped into the seat and it blew us into a field right there that's in, not what you wanted to in hear normandy and a, a, a family took us in and gave us some, wow that's no that's not what happened it was a very boring train ride <laughs> I made myself sick, worrying with fear over nothing, and then we made it back to the ship and we enjoyed the rest of our trip. But um, I'm so glad we kind of broke off from the family and did something that they had a wonderful time in, in Paris. Um, but we when we go to Paris, because we haven't been, we want to make sure that we spend more than like two hours there. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't want to. I didn't want to do four hours on a bus, two hours in Paris and four hours back on a bus. That's not how you that can do sounded, Paris. I that don't sounded think. really bad. To me. So we had a wonderful time and we followed all of our own rules on how we felt comfortable making sure we got back. We have never been peer runners, probably because of my craziness of making sure we're back on the ship or even near the ship close to the time um because i don't like pushing it i don't find any pleasure in that whatsoever neither of us do um have we seen any peer runners a couple we've seen a couple but, but no one that really, really missed. they weren't late no no we haven't seen anybody miss the boat we haven't seen anybody like like late we've seen people like a few Running. minutes left yeah Few minutes, you know, like five minutes like left no one before ever it was going to yeah. come running down and everybody on the ship cheering. And yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but we've we've never seen. I've even heard people on the ship go, leave us. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to it's fun to, to troll the peer runners on the ship. Yeah, because you know uh, they've been probably in the bar too long or exactly. whatever. But. Um, but yeah, I think that like we've traveled a lot and we've kind of have these rules kind of set for us. And um, so we just wanted to kind of share that kind of our experience with taking a little bit um, away from the ship. And yeah, um, we made smart choices sometimes. <laughs> exactly. And I think that that kind of plays along with how we kind of always suggest people do. Right. With probably their crews, too. And that's. Figure it out beforehand. Mm -hmm. Figure out what you want to experience. Make sure you experience what you want to experience. Right. And then one, one, while you're experiencing that, you can be carefree. Yep. So if you've already made those decisions beforehand and you feel like you've covered your your bases yeah. 
for um, your excursion. If you feel like you can, mm-hmm. you can make it there and make it back in time. You're comfortable. There's, yep. you're covering everything. You're not taking a lot. You, boy, when you're out there, you're going to have, have a, a lot more fun. A lot more fun. Yeah, because then you're not worried. Yeah. Or you can just do it willy nilly. And hope. <laughs> and, then, and maybe there's maybe. lots of people that are out there that are like, I don't even think about it when I'm a, if you do it on your own and, you, you know, you might miss it. But um, we have never I'm just kind of wrapping this up. We have um, never done a third party shore excursion. Um I don't think we have. What do you mean a third party? Like via tour or something like booked a shore excursion, not through the cruise line. Oh, you mean with a tour company? Yeah, with a tour company that wasn't. I don't think we have. I think we're more comfortable just kind of doing things on our own. Usually we feel more in control. I think if we. Yeah, I think usually if if it's like a tour, you can probably get it through the cruise line. And so, yeah, you know, why? But um curious to know from you guys have you done a third party have you been late or have you i I don't know if any of you have necessarily missed we probably would have heard that by now but um what is your experience with short exertions and do you feel comfortable um going out on your own doing that so i'd love to hear some feedback from you guys um next week uh we're going to we're preparing for it already um uh, we have a requested podcast where we um kind of pit carnival and msc against each other on a bunch of different subjects and see who wins right we're going to rate them one to five on our on on each whatever scale we figure out yeah yeah because we've had experience with carnival and msc so we're going to kind of give you guys some of our thoughts about how a bunch of stuff on the cruise how they compare yeah sound good it sounds fun actually yeah i'm looking forward to that yeah so. so thank you so much for joining um We appreciate all your feedback. Yes. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.